guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today, as you can see on the screen, we are joined live by Benzer Rydell, who is, if you're not already familiar with his name, well, you probably need to be if you have any interest in the competitive scene in Clash Royale. He came on really strong in 2018, he had a really good 2018. He's a pro player for Chaos Theory in CRL Asia. He won first place in the 2018 Asian Games, beating a ton of other other incredible players such as Elsiop who actually finished second in that contest. Now this year he continues to kind of improve his name and the pedigree that goes along with him and his accomplishments. So check it out right now. We're going to be enjoying live gameplay at 7,473 trophies in today's video. But before we hop into that, a quick side note, right? He has the number one win percentage right now in King of the Hill in all CRL Asia and and currently top five in terms of his 1v1 set win percentage, sitting currently at 17 in six overall in 1v1. So suffice it to say, this guy, whether it's ladder, whether it's tournament level standard, he is a jack of all trades. He's good with so many different decks and his favorite deck in the game, whether it be ladder or tournament level standard is this mortar bait deck. So not a new deck by any stretch of the imagination, but check it out, guys. It is definitely the best mortar deck right now in the game. You know, motorcycle, I get a lot of uh, requests in the comments for motorcycle decks, mortar rocket cycle, like OG old school decks. Not that they suck, but they're definitely not meta right now. And I've looked for pros to play those decks, and I'm sure pros will come on the channel. But I think they say that, like, I think I reached out to Vulcan most recently, and he was just like, yeah. You know, I'll come on if you want me to, but I just don't think the deck is that good. And that's, as a content creator, that's what I want run into, that kind of internal, you know, dilemma, right? Do I share a deck that every pro says isn't good, that the win rates say isn't good just because people are requesting it? Uh, so I made the decision not to do that, but I don't know. Feel free to just, you know, state your case in the comments below if you disagree with that decision. But anyway, guys, I've rambled on long enough. Let's go ahead and jump into some replays against Jack and Anaban, then some live ladder matches. All right, guys, let's start out with the one against Jack here. So starting things off, surprisingly, shockingly, Jack not playing 2.6, probably trying to get some practice in for CRL. Currently, he's had some really awesome moments in CRL. I shared a video of him, Jack the Cycle God is the title of the video from last week, where he reverse swept or swept in King of the Hill. Uh, but overall, he's been struggling in CRL Asia, believe it or not. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see, right? You see kind of a... Uh, a, a deck master of one deck, 2.6 with Jack, try to transition to tournament level standard where he has to play a variety of decks. Sometimes there's definitely an adjustment period. Right now he only has a 42% overall win rate in CRL Asia, that's Jack speaking. So here we go against him here playing Log bait. So Jack playing the classic version of log bait. I actually didn't catch if he has knight in there. Oh, he, of course he has knight in there, right in front of your face, Ash. Uh, so yeah, he's playing classic log bait here. But Benzel with a nice snowball there to push that princess on his side of the arena, and then flashes the twenty win thumbs up. Uh, Jack with some hugs screaming <laughs> over there. By the way, uh, yesterday's video was so much fun for some reason. I had a lot. That one HP match in yesterday's video was just insane. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did, but I was able to deliver. I, I hooked up all the uh, all the beautiful nurses below me <laughs> with some some coffees. So I think they forgave me for my screaming like a, a little fangirl uh, after that first match because uh, yeah, you want to try to be polite here and respectful uh, to the people in my building. So here we go. Anyway, uh, we strike first. 22-27 uh, remaining on the left tower here uh, for Jack. And about 20, uh, 15, 20 seconds or so remaining here in single elixir time. So what are we going to do here? We're going to use the bar barrel on the princess, which is noteworthy here. And then the goblin barrel comes down. We use the goblin gang on that goblin barrel. Very well played there by uh, Benzer. So now we have about a minute left in this match. Let's see how we change our gameplay or if we change our gameplay at all. This is one of those, even though it's a 3.3 deck, 
You can still play it very aggressively. It has the bait elements of it. Not to say you're just going to spam, you know, haphazardly throughout the match. But if you know your opponent doesn't have a good counter to your mortar or your miner, go ahead and send it in for some chip damage. So here, let's see if we can finish off this print. No, a knight comes down last second for Jack. But we actually do latch on to that left tower. Looks like we're going to get one, maybe, yes, two mortar hits. Meanwhile, Goblin Barrel coming down the right lane. We spot it early again with that Goblin Gang. And immediately with the mortar in the left. Inferno Tower to counter the mortar. We'll take that 5 for 4 trade. And the Princess still kind of in her perch there on the right side. But look at the damage advantage here for Benzer. And only 15 seconds remaining here in regulation. This time we use Bar Barrel on the Gob Barrel. So not too bad. Princess is not latched onto our tower. Spirit Goblin is going to finish off that first Princess. Now a second Princess is down. Snowball pushes that Princess over. Says get out of my way. And we don't really get any damage though. Uh, via the Miner onto that left tower. So Rocket comes down. Jack trying to make up some uh, damage here in this game. And he has a very aggressive Rocket on that right tower. We go in with a Miner Minion. Horde here on the left tower. Princess is down again. Miner's on the tower. We snowball those goblins out of the way. One minion connects to the tower, getting three swipes. That minion, really big connection there. Jack gives the good game. Benzer gives the well played. We're going to go aggressive here. Goblin gang, knight down to distract the mortar. We have a miner down again. The snowball comes down. Miner poison in, in uh, double elixir time is kind of similar to Miner Snowball in this deck, as you would play in a Miner Poison deck. And there it is, 97 HP, one more Miner connection into Snowball. We'll probably take this tower down. Actually, a rocket against the Spear Goblins. Positive Elixir Trade! Positive Elixir Trade! Guys, let's uh, watch the Inaban match here uh, next, and then we will uh, just watch Live Ladder after this. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, Miner Poison, what are you talking about, Ash? What I actually mean is, uh, when you send in your Miner and your opponent, obviously in double elixir time, you're going to know if your opponent's going to be countering your Miner with anything kind of uh, susceptible to snowball damage. Usually people do. Usually they'll use skeletons or goblins, goblin gang bats, whatever, against your Miner. So just like a Miner poison deck, you can get aggressive in double elixir time and start sending in those predictive snowballs. Again, providing your opponent is countering your, is making a habit of countering countering your miner with uh, with the swarm units uh, in single elixir time. So here we go, going against Anaban playing this, oh my word dude, Anaban uh, playing Pekka Freeze, Pekka Balloon Freeze with Lumberjack. Man, what a nasty deck here. So uh, Mortar does connect to that right tower, gonna get maybe two hits before this balloon finishes it off, and then we're gonna go ahead and snowball. Make that, okay, is it three hits? No, only two hits, but hey, not bad. And you're going to see Benzer's going to be very, very uh, strategic with the snowball. He's going to wait until the perfect moment to use his snowballs. He does not fire his snowballs early, ladies and gentlemen. He waits till the last, last second that he can get away with uh, getting adva taking advantage of that knockback. So here comes Spirit Goblins here. Another thing from Benzer that you're going to notice, guys, is that he always uses the cheapest option in his hand to defend. And look at this beautiful bar barrel on that e on that ice whiz, excuse me, allows that mortar to connect to the tower and wow comes down for Anaban. So yeah, so he'll always use the cheapest option that he thinks he can get away with. I'm not saying that he always just plays cheap troops only. Obviously, he just played Rascals there, right? But and look at the snowball. Look at the snowball. Look at how long he delayed on that snowball. Again, just perfect job. And now, because of that delay, or I guess, yeah, because of that delay, the Rascals moved forward a little bit more, and the Tornado does not finish them off. And hey, it's nothing crazy. Those girl rascals, because they didn't die to that balloon damage via the tornado, were able to stay alive and get a couple hits off against that mega minion, basically negating that mega minion on the counter push. So now we take that right tower down of Anaban. Anaban currently, by the way, is like top 10 in the world right now, even higher than Benzer is in trophies. And we go in with the minion horde here. All we really have to do is defend. Look at this defense here, guys. 30 seconds remaining. Check this defense out. It's going to be beautiful here. We delay. We know he has freeze in hand, right? Or maybe we don't know. Has he even used freeze yet? I don't, I don't think he has. But look at the delay. And now look at this. I mean, forget it. There's the freeze. Doesn't matter. One Spear Goblin comes through in the clutch there. 
Very, very well played. Didn't even take too much tower damage there, did Benzer. And here comes the uh, the classic Anaban BM at the end of the match there. Let's go ahead and hop into some live ladder gameplay, guys. Well, let's hope for some wins. Let's hope for some dubs here. As here we go into match number one. That took forever to find a match there. Probably about five minutes or so. So I'm a little bit late. I apologize to that, but nothing much has happened. We probably opened up with Spirit Goblins at the bridge, which is a great first play. And it looks like we're going against, ah, uh, okay. I was going to say maybe Ice Bow, but it, it appears I'd be wrong there. But we do connect with some minions on that left tower, taking it down to 2100, 2104 to be exact. 45 seconds into this match, guys. By the way, CRL starts tonight. It's a hog deck. Hog Rocket. It's been a while since I've seen Hog Rocket, guys. Uh, I guess it, when you, you know, the Viper deck, the uh, the Happy Noob deck. But aside from that, you don't see many Hog Rocket cycle decks going around lately. And uh, 2006, great year. I'm sure some of you were born in 2006. HP remaining on the left tower. But anyway, yeah. CRL West kicks off tonight in just, what, two hours from the time that I'm uploading this video. So if you're awake, depending on where you live, and you want to tune in, I will be there in the chat. You can uh, chat with me. But more importantly, you can see the pro gameplay. So 1737, Miner's getting some more damage here. And then we use the defensive mortar. Let's see how we handle this deck defensively here uh, in our first live match. So we're going to go get some chip damage. You see that opposite lane Spear Goblin play? It's something that I've noticed that uh, Benzer does a lot as well. Whether it be a giant coming down, a hog, a balloon, whatever. We pull with the mortar. And then on the opposite side, we're going to use our Spear Goblins in that scenario. Spear Goblins can put out a deceptive amount of damage at times. And there's the last card. It's the Inferno Tower. So this is essentially the meta 2.8 hog deck. But instead of Earthquake, they're just using Rockets, which, which obviously performs a bit better on ladder, especially if you don't have Earthquake maxed out, right? So here we go. It's going to be a Mortar in the left. 1186 damage remaining, and we've just basically Minor chipped away a lot. Unless I missed a Mortar connection, I probably did. I've been blabbing so much during this, during this uh, live match here. But uh, exchanging snowballs there. Hey, Chris just used a very nice snowball there to push that miner back, allow him to cycle to the skeletons on top of that miner. But you're seeing that this is a dual win condition deck, obviously. But, you know, miner in some matchups, in some matchups, you're just not going to be able to get that mortar onto the tower. So of course, you know, try it if you can, right? This time the snowball comes down, catches those skeletons. Look at all this damage we're getting here, guys. But sometimes in matchups like this one, you're just going to be relying on your miner to chip away every single time you know your opponent doesn't have their win condition in hand. Or sometimes even when they do, just so you can help make them focus on defending a little bit so they can't devote as much elixir onto their offense. So 178 remaining, about 10 seconds here remaining inside the match. It looks like Benzer here is just happy to snowball cycle onto the left tower. A uh, bar barrel comes down. We have the hog coming down. No big deal. We have Goblin Gang in hand. We have the motor in hand. We pull. Nice separation there with the Spirit Goblins on the opposite side. Takes care of that archer. Takes care of that hog. Miner comes in. Snowballs down. And boom. Towered down. Nice. Starting out with a victory there from Benzer. Let's move into another match, guys. All right, guys. Ooh, against Helge Andre. I wonder if Helge is playing the deck that we shared. Oh, he is. Oh, he is indeed. This is the deck that we had Helge on the channel just last week sharing. This is the deck that I think is the easiest slash strongest in the game right now. I think the title of the video was the strongest, easiest deck in the game right now. I truly believe that. Uh, and I, I have a confession to make. I have been cheating on my P.E.K.K.A. deck just a little bit, pushing up with the, the deck that Helge is playing. I truly think it's it's just incredibly strong, and it's a lower skill cap deck, but you can get better at it through experience, especially with a Tornado, using it in combination with the Golem Death Damage, and in combination, obviously, with the Double Dragon of the deck. It's just such a lethal deck right now, using the very powerful Dark Prince as well. So let's see how we handle this matchup. This matchup is a doozy. <laughs> To quote my grandmother, <laughs> this matchup is probably a doozy here in uh, double elixir time especially. So Benzer's going to want to get as much damage as humanly possible here in single elixir time. Because man, these mammoth pushes, Golem, Dark Prince, 
and we don't even have a big spell, right? Double dragon, how are we going to stop that? So here comes a minion horde there. NATO comes down immediately, and the NATO plus the E-Drag totally decimates our minion horde. Now we have a boy, uh, boy rascal and a barbarian on that golem. Spare goblins are helping out, but we have a dark prince coming down the lane as well, forcing out a defensive miner out of Benzer's hand right now. E-Drag doing some work. Dark prince at about, uh, thank thankfully, okay, Snowball's going to go ahead and take care of that dark prince, but now we have to deal with the lumberjack as well. A nice relentless pressure here coming from Helge, and he's going to go ahead and give the GG, and Tower is not, is it going to be down? I think it's going to be down. 147 in one fell swoop, that Tower is down. We have the left Tower down to 1207, but it's going to be difficult. We almost have to wait till he plays... I don't know. I'm gonna go. Ahead. How do you how do you win this matchup here in double elixir time against this deck? Very very difficult matchup, and uh, we'll see what Benzer can do here, guys. We play Rascals in the left, going against the Baby D and the Mega Minion in the left. We cycle some Spear Goblins. Let's see what he does here. Minion Horde uh, down. We also have the Miner. Uh, Helgate actually catches that Miner, then Nato's everything back. Oh man, look at that defense. Mega Minion, Dark Prince, E-Drag. Good luck getting through that, you know. Uh, you gotta hand it to Benzer. Tried. Tried what he could do there on that push. But here it goes. Another Bar Barrel down the left. E-Drag and Lumberjack there to stymie that push. We play an offensive mortar just, you know, just on a prayer that we can get a connection there. But Dark Prince is in hand. Meyer goes in. Meyer's on the tower. Ten seconds remaining. A snowball comes down, but there it goes. A nice NATO to buy some extra time for Helge. And it looks like, unfortunately, that's going to be an L there. Ooh, too bad. I was hoping we could maybe low-key push to number one in the world. But let's go ahead and keep the video running, guys, with another live match. All right, guys, going against Urania Sam here from Urania Esports. Shout out to Urania Esports. So let's see if we can come. That was a tough matchup, man. That's just, that's just it. That, that deck is just so... So silly, that Golem deck, man. It, it, it's super strong. I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably having success with it because I heard the day after I uploaded that video from a lot of you just like, dude, that deck is just so sick right now. And it, and it, it truly is. It's just like, it's unstoppable. Not really, but really <laughs> anyway here we go going against it looks like maybe a minor control deck you see the minor you figure there's got to be poison and then you figure okay inferno tower bats it might be the only win condition in the deck just the minor we'll see sometimes they run prince or dark prince alongside of it in this case it looks to be rascals so rascals seen in both of these decks here in this matchup and by the way guys if you don't have rascals leveled up for whatever reason they are a common card so a little bit easier but they haven't been around as long as the prince and the dark prince so you can sub in Prince or Dark Prince in this deck for Rascals if you're looking for a sub. But I would prefer Rascals. Obviously, Benzer does too because they do have that added bait element of the log being used or the bar barrel being used on the girl Rascals. So here we go. And this could be a nice connection here. A nice snowball comes down, taking care of those bats. It's going to put us way in the damage advantage there after taking some chip damage onto our left tower. We take his tower down to 1923 halfway through this match. So here we go. Well played coming down. Oops, coming down. Sam, dude, easy, bro. There's plenty of time left, dude. You haven't lost. Uh, so I think the last card is probably going to be poison for Sam. So let's see. Oh, no, I stand corrected. How did I not know it's a balloon matchup, right? It feels like balloon is everywhere right now. These faster balloon cycle decks, this one not being as fast as we're used to seeing with Lumberjack, but still definitely an effective deck. And speaking of effective, that was a really nice defensive sequence there by Benzer. Here we go into double elixir time. We're going to stay aggressive here with a Goblin Gang and a Miner, knowing that the opponent only has the uh, Snowball in hand, and now they have the Bar Barrel. But they use both the Bar Barrel and the Snowball there. In that one sequence defensively, let's see if Benzer attacks here or, or what he's going to do. Of course, he's going to want to save Elixir too because he knows the opponent can always go aggressive with the balloon if they want to. So now we know they have to cycle the spells really quickly. We send in the quick miner there. Bats are down as well. Inferno Tower is down too. I guess trying to stymie that boy rascal. But we're getting all kinds of minor chip damage on that right tower. But notice how Benzer made sure he didn't use all of, uh, all of his Elixir there. He could have easily went really, really aggressive off offensively there he was already getting a bunch of chip damage and the miner was already tanking instead he waited he had like seven elixir there once uh sam dropped that balloon very very nice kind of wherewithal to save some elixir for that big balloon push now only 291 remaining on the right tower here as we enter into sudden death overtime 
So Rascal is split in the back there for Sam, playing rather defensively. Now he goes in with that Miner. We don't catch it, unfortunately, with that boy Rascal, but we still have the huge damage advantage. So here we go again. Balloon, Ice Golem coming in the left. Miner going in in the right. We have the Mortar to pull the Balloon. We have the Snowball to kill those bats. Miner's on the tower, 22 HP. One more Snowball will finish this one off, guys. Or one more Miner hit. Let's see what comes first. Miner's down, and boom! Another victory, or a victory. And that's gonna do it, guys. Benzer right now is so high in trophies that he doesn't wanna play live that that much. He said he could give me a few matches. So that's what I've delivered to you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. The replays, the player kind of profile at the beginning, and of course the live matches. A little bit of everything here. A little Clash Royale potpourri for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. Huge shout out to Stats Royale, my YouTube partner, and of course, Bren Chong. My man, also of the owner of Bren Esports, also in CRL Asia. One of Benzer's competitioned in chaos esports so guys thank you so much for watching really appreciate it check out benzer's player stats information of course again thanks to stats royale and of course his twitter information follow him on twitter he's a beast guys you won't regret it thank you for watching and as always take care guys